All right, folks, back at it again. Worm bait one day here with your host, Steve Holt. And today we're going to talk about the experiment that not one of our agents in the field participated in, but I myself. As you know, we've kind of already cracked Bumble and its face recognition technology for being absolute crap. So I wanted to take it a little bit further. And after I saw that, I thought, okay, I've used these apps before. How well would this model do if he's on these apps? Because again, he's verified, it's gotta be him. So I figured, easy, simple test. So for our test, what we'll do is we'll have it for a week with your host here, Steve Holt running it, and then we'll have it for a week as the model. The idea is to swipe right on everything. There's gonna be no discrimination whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't matter weight, doesn't matter age, doesn't matter nothing. Just whatever the app shows us, we're just gonna swipe, swipe right, agree, uh, say that we like them. So, We'll do that for Worm Bait One Day, Steve Holt, and then the model. So, I thought first though, we should show exactly what Steve Holt's putting up. So if we look here, on this, oh, wrong, there we go, and excellent. So, on Bumble, you get six pictures, three prompts. And that's how you have to try to woo and wow somebody. So for my first photo, just picture your old Steve cleaned up. I figured, yeah, show, just show a smile, show cleaned up. May that be something people like. And I'm no expert on dating and especially I'm no expert on dating apps but this was just my approach so we can kind of compare picture two is Steve with a group of friends just hanging out does show that Steve's a little taller the women like the taller one we got some tall MFer though on the uh, left there photo three Steve just being a little acrobatic, hanging out, doing his thing, just showing athleticism that we're maybe not part of that 75% of overweight individuals in America, overweight males, I should say. Picture four. Um, this was actually for an experiment in school to see how people would react. I thought it was funny. It showed a little humor. So that's why we went with that one. So first picture is a little more serious. This picture a little more lighthearted. Picture five. Oh. Well, I gotta probably zoom out. There we go. Picture five. I love America. I know that might have turned some people off especially since I got thrown out of an establishment once for having that with me that I'm holding there in my right hand in the picture. But I appreciate America, and if somebody has a problem with that, honestly, they can kiss my ass because that's a part of who I am. So that's, that's my potential first offensive photo is photo five, if I'm still holding their attention, mind you. Photo six, try to show a little bit of the guns, you know. Can't go on Bumble, one of the stipulations is you can't be shirtless. Or they ask the picture, well you can't be shirtless but it has to be at a beach. I can't tell you when I've been to a beach so I don't have a shirtless photo of me. So the extent I could take it was me standing on a bear, pretty bare background, and a wife beater, <laughs> trying, <laughs> so it could try to show off as much as what I have. But that was photo six, and again, that's if the women are still with me and they're going through the first photo, so let's get to Steve's prompts here. True truths and a lie. We experimented with this one a little bit. 
So I flipped my first home solo at 25. I've never lost a case in court representing my clients and I'm married and looking for side action. Now where I might have run into problems with this before, and I've used these prompts before, and not just in the experiment. People would, I think, sometimes assume it was the last one, or at least that was my thought process, and that would, like, scare people. So sometimes I'd change it to, I was on this specific reality show, or I'm an ex-con trying to go straight and get my kids back. Tribute to Bender, the offender. But either way... It was kind of a, hey, here's some interesting things that might make me seem like a decent guy. And then, hey, there's a funny, maybe not, but gives you something to easily kind of inquire about and just go, hey, you know, is it true you're looking for some side action there, champ? But the last one, the last one is the lie, <laughs> in case that needed noted there. Um, not to point. <laughs> On to prompt two. I tried to be funny. I didn't know what the heck else to say. This one I'd sometimes change to to be funny. Uh, something along the lines of like, I downloaded this app to keep my ego in check because my, my ego was getting too large, so I downloaded this app to keep it in check. This I just did something lighthearted, funny. I thought hey, you know, kind of another easy thing instead of just saying I like pineapple on pizza or I'm a fan of Harry Potter or I watch The Office or any of this other crap that you constantly see on these things, I try to be a little bit different. And who knows, maybe there are a bunch of fellows that use that because I'm not carousing through the fellows' profiles. But that was prompt two. Third one, no one ever related to to this, but the Fran Stigler and Charles Brown incident is a incident that took place during the Second World War. Long story short, a German fighter spared an American bomber, captained by or yeah, commanded by Charles Brown, as it was in terrible shape, and this German pilot actually escorted this American bomber back. An absolute great moment of humanity in a time of war. It's a phenomenal story. Read more about it. Sabaton, they've got a great uh, song on that too. So that's another another way to reference it. But that is that is my profile. So, how did we do? After a week, we were indiscriminate, tried to get what we can. How did we do? Big fat zero. Well, almost. So within a week, Steve was able to get one match. So one seventh of a match, that's less than 15% per day. Yes. So yeah, one in a week. And that person didn't even start a conversation. So what happens on Bumble if they don't start a conversation? they go away, they disappear, there's no longer a match if the woman doesn't start start it. So overall, didn't put in a ton of time, but my return on investment was absolutely awful, as I didn't even have a conversation with a human being while using the app. So how's, how's the model going to do? The model on our thumbnail that we look I think pretty, pretty strikingly. We got the same, same bone structure, same, same eye, same everything. But uh, maybe my prompts were weak. So how, how did the model do? Well, let's take a quick peek. So here's the profile that we use, which we've shown before in our other video of the Bumble experiment. And then there's our little, ooh, don't forget our little, our little verification sticker showing that we've obviously got to be this fellow right here. A photo one at the beach. Photo two, it passed, I guess, with Bumble because he's at the beach. And then photo three and four are just this fellow working out. 
What were his prompts? I tried to go for a little bit of like the I'm totally screwed category. I thought it might scare people away if you're just like, I'm an absolute mess. So here are the prompts. After work, you can find me at the gym trying to better myself. I used to have a gambling problem. My journey of daily training has helped me from relapsing. Okay. So, hey, I'm this guy, but I have a gambling problem. Or I had, I should say, had a gambling problem, but... Probably not good with money, so financial responsibility may be lower than average. But that's prompt one. Prompt two and three. I'm hoping you have a better opener than hey. Because on Bumble, the women initiate the conversation. So something better than hey. We'll get along if you're a decent person and place some value on fitness. Also, if you can understand, I had a rough past, including jail time, but I'm getting back on my feet now. I also thought that one would potentially scare people away. Jail time, what for? Didn't say. Misdemeanor, felony, who knows? On the con side, after I ran the experiment, though, maybe that makes this fella more interesting. So perhaps I shouldn't have put that one in there, but we ran the experiment. That's how it goes. So again, we were indiscriminate. You get to swipe right. You can see who you match with. So how did this fella do? This fella averaged 21 total likes a day. It maxed out at that and it stayed at that. So any day looking at the app, there are 21 people in line every day wanting to talk to this guy. So he did much better than my, my one like. 21, 21 a day. So in a week, he's pulling 147 likes. And I want to think that the app caps at that? And the reason I think that is as soon as I would run that number down when I do my swipe right, it would run down because you're finding people. Then it would climb right back up pretty much to 20. I mean, you'd see it jump almost instantly. I'd say in five minutes, you'd see a couple more likes get added to the tally. And then once it got to 21, it stayed at 21. I don't want you getting too big of a head. 21's a day, probably a good cap, nearly, nearly one an hour. So, when I was swiping right, as I was a model, and verified as one, I would get eight matches a day. Eight matches daily, so in a week, eight times seven is 56. 56 matches in a week and he could have had more, but you run out of swipes. They only let you swipe so much, and then they go, hey, give us your credit card, and we'll let you see who else likes you. But they were just pouring in, the women that like this guy. And as we can see here, I just have one of the uh, screenshots to not give off too much about people here. How do they start? <laughs> How did all the women that pretty much initiated contact with this guy start their dialogue. Hey, how is your week going so far? Hey, I see this. Hey, how are you? Hey, I think you're gorgeous. Hey, 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 hey. Hey is for horses. And I specifically put in the profile, don't just start with hey. Over 90%, maybe hello was, you know, the other ones. So this guy is getting absolutely flooded, and they're all in line, they're ready to go. Now, the only interesting thing I will say 
is less than 50% of the women would initiate contact. So the match timer would run up, like for example here, we see the, uh, this is like the timer, this little yellow part, and this is some people that I just matched with, so there's like 24 hours, and then it, so at 12 hours it'll only be half full. So this person probably has, what, six and hour or so left, and they never said anything. And actually, interestingly enough, as I stated, 50% of people wouldn't even start a conversation with this guy. But they were absolutely lining up. And it was ridiculous. Utter, utterly, utterly ridiculous. So, I think we did have another... No, that's it actually. Fantastic. What does this mean? I'll tell you exactly what it means. It means if you're an average guy who's going to use the app, try to put forth the time and the effort there's a good chance no one even wants to talk to you. So your return on investment, your your time, your time has value. Always remember that in any transaction. Your time has value. So you're putting in time to swipe, which, yes, ha I wasn't even looking at profiles. You're putting in time to swipe. You're putting in time to potentially talk to these people, to organize a meetup, to do any of that. So if you put forth, let's even just say 30 minutes a day of swiping, conversing with people, doing things like that, that's three and a half hours a week you could have spent bettering yourself, reading, weight training, whatever it is. You could have spanked your monkey. You could have done anything and absolutely had a better use of your time. Now, if you're a very attractive guy, top 10% of looks, you're just going to pull them in. And it gets to where you're absolutely flooded. And even as I was using it, uh, acting as this individual, identifying as this individual, you get almost irritated with the number of messages you get and just everybody likes you and it's understandable that everybody would like to at least you know give a shout out say their opinion but it was everybody and we'll we'll review the conversations more in my next video with the experimentations but it's awful <laughs> even, even the weird thing was even when just a little basic info even when you're this attractive, good-looking guy, women still have no game. Women don't add anything interesting to the conversation, start with anything interesting for the conversation. They were still very dull, still very basic, asked basic things, and usually one of the first questions was, what do you do for money? Money was one of the top top things that kind of came up right away. So, hey, you're good looking. Do you also make money? Oh, you make money? Oh, man. So it got very irritating and I didn't want to put too much time because it started to get very sad and actually, I didn't last the whole week as the male model because it just kind of got depressing for me. And not depressing to the point where I'm going to jump off a bridge or do anything. Freak out, man! But it did make me think less of myself. That within a week, there wasn't anybody on all those things that would want to even shoot a, Hey, how's your day? Like they did to that fella. So again, we'll go more into the conversations in our next video because we'll also compare with another part of our experiment where we go a little deeper into it. 
But no, if you're an average guy, having zero conversations a week, it's not worth it. If you're a good looking guy, you're going to get flooded and it might get irritating. Because it seems like everyone comes off so cookie cutter, so basic. Which is, hi, how's your day, hey, oh, you look good. There's just absolutely no game. Absolutely no game. But on a little bit more lighthearted of a note, let's review two things. We're going to review a dating profile that might have something to kind of do with this. And then we're going to review a Bumble review. So when you download the app, you can look at reviews. And Bumble has more one-star reviews than anything else. So maybe people kind of realize it's garbage. So on March the 3rd, this is public information. If you go to the app, a fellow named Robert reviews. Looks like Bumble had my review deleted. They commented on it and then it disappeared. Suspicious. That's pretty sus. If there's a good reason for it, I'll edit this review. Guessing it's because I took issue with having the woman message first. It's an interesting idea, so I gave it a shot. But in practice, I've had the worst results out of any app. I get fewer matches, and the women never take initiative when we do match. I'm sure some hot guys are doing well on it, but if you're average looking, good luck. Robert, I'm there with you, buddy. I understand where you're coming from, and it is a dumpster fire. A dumpster fire that should be avoided. All right, folks, so for our dating profile we're going to review, when you're coming across these women and one of the... Hex, let's just get into it here. Okay, this was on a dating profile from Hinge. So this wasn't Bumble, but this was Hinge, and I thought it had something to do with it. So in this woman's profile, she mentions that she's a gym rat. She takes value in her appearance, which, funny, if you look at this picture in which she admits she realizes her modeling career might be over, she probably falls into that 70% of American women that are overweight or obese. Which, for someone tending to the gym, yeah, as much as she claims, is, and she's even in a locker room, it appears here, taking a picture in front of a mirror. I mean, yeah, you can look at her arm. She's got, she about got bigger arms than me, but they flabby. They ain't, they ain't toned arms, I'll tell you that. So what does this woman what does this woman want out of somebody? She's 28. She's 5'5. She is a lab technician at Sherwin Williams. I don't know if that means just someone that works there or somebody doing like product enhancement, R and D. No idea. I didn't communicate with this woman. But she wants someone who is buff. Now, real quick. She wants someone who's buff. Because we all know if that lady had to haul ass and take her two trips. But she falls into the overweight category. But she wants not just a in-shape guy. Someone who's got to be buff. Okay. Can cook. Got to be able to cook too, fellas. Cook for yourself, cook for her. Make sure you memorize her order, what she likes, and have it, have it ready for her when she wants it. And is preferably not a jerk. Preferably. So if you're buff and you can cook, go ahead and be a dickhead. She might still be interested in you. 28-year-old woman there. Wants a buff, buff man. So, that is my review of Bumble. Uh, again, going over the stats. Average guy, Steve Holt, one week, one match, zero conversations, zero messages sent. Absolute donuts we put up on the board. 
If you're a good looking guy, you'll get about 21 likes a day, eight matches a day, you'll get flooded with messages, and it's boring and dull. But for the point of the experiment, kind of showed, I think the word might be shallow, how shallow women are, and that's another analysis I had. Didn't matter what the woman had to offer, what she had to bring to the table, they still liked them. So if they were someone that was unattractive, moderately attractive, or very attractive, for any re whatever reasons in any scopes, everyone wanted a piece of this guy. So again, if you're an average guy, fellas, your time does have value. It's the most important thing that you have. Remember that. It is not worth using dating apps. It is especially not worth using Bumble. But I would say any dating app in general can't really compare to, say, Tinder because I've got old tech, so I can't run this experiment there, get verified, and potentially pose as somebody else to show how shallow people can be. But average guy, zero, zero, uh, one like, zero matches in a week, good looking guy, 147 likes a week, 56 matches a week. So if you're a good looking guy in the apps, you'll have plenty of choices if you're willing to go through the garden and do a lot of weeding. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can find that person on a free dating app. Thanks again as always. This is Worm Bait One Day. Steve Holt signing out. We'll be uh, back with a article review probably here soon. I'll actually have some time to review some stuff. I want to review some of the articles we were going over once with marriage and the red flags and things like that. Check that out and see what that has to offer. And then maybe we'll go back to more experiments. See what I or agents in the field can uncover and add just to go into this. And then we'll also, at some point here soon, go over other people. After I then did this, um, Researching, reading, other people have also done these experiments online. They've done them for longer periods, and they've got Excel sheets, spreadsheets, all the information you could about imagine for fellas. So, don't use the dating apps. They're hidden behind a paywall, and even with that paywall, you're not going to go anywhere. Sad, but it's true. Dating apps have helped to ruin the dating world, in my opinion. Social, social media and dating apps, internet, instantaneous gratification. This is a subject I can rant about forever. I don't know who would want to listen to me do that, but thank you for watching. And this is Worm Bait One Day, signing off.